Hello everybody and welcome back. Thanks for tuning in to another episode in the series here. My name is Dominic and I'm the host of the Android Factory. I hope everybody had an enjoyable Mother's Day weekend if you were celebrating it. I apologize for a little bit of a delay in the release schedule. I seem to have caught a little stomach bug that drained my energy over the past few days and I didn't want to sound sluggish during the recording process. But nevertheless, I'm feeling better now, so let's jump right back into it. I had to open up the app here to Pickle Rick because um, that was probably one of the best episodes that ever aired on TV. But if you've missed any of this, if you're just jumping in now, we have built out a little application here that fetches some characters and some character details from a simple Morty API here that exists on the web. Uh, so I'd recommend going back and checking out the beginning of this season if you've missed it up until this point. And if you are returning, uh, you might notice one very small detail if you have a pretty good eye, but I've gone ahead and updated the card radius here from the default three, I believe it is, to eight right here. And as the thumbnail suggests, we are going to be adding headers into our list here. So if you remember, this is actually a paged list, meaning as the user scrolls the screen, the app will dynamically load more characters into memory and then eventually populate them here in this recycler view implementation that we use epoxy for to get the data on screen to the user. But you've noticed in between the last O character and the first P character, we have a nice little divider here, a nice little separation in our UI. You can see here in the end section, it doesn't line up properly as far as there's an odd number of characters here, but you see our view kind of take up the entire screen at this point, and we just have an empty cell here. Uh, I don't really think that's too big of a deal. I think that actually kind of makes the most sense for uh, the implementation, but otherwise, as you would expect, everything else works uh, as expected. And so if we fling all the way up to the top here, we can see that we have a main family header here, then we have our five main characters, it seems, and then our alphabetical situation begins here where we start grouping the characters by their names. I did not pull these out. It just seems that when you fetch the characters that the first five characters that are returned every time are these characters, even though they are not in alphabetical order. I guess there are in order of importance for the TV series, and so that makes sense, but we did have to kind of account for that in our code. So that's enough conversation on the topic. Let's go ahead and jump right into it. I've gone ahead and added a very simple layout file here called model character list title. You simply have a card view here that has a text view on the inside of it, uh, and that's about it here. And the corner radius of our material card view, the same as our card view here, so that things just kind of have that same bubbly feel. So flipping over to our page list epoxy controller implementation here, we need to go ahead and extend this implementation or update the logic that exists here to go ahead and find room for all these different headers and instruct epoxy on where to fill them in. So very simply here we can create an epoxy model implementation like so where our constructor to the data class will take a single string variable here named title this class will extend the view binding Kotlin model with the particular view binding. Then we go ahead and add in the correct layout resource ID for the file that we just created here that I reviewed. And then inside here, like I said, we have a text view whose ID is text view. So inside of our bind function here that we need to implement, we can go ahead and set the text equal to the title that is passed in. And so this seems good and all, but if we take a look at this file here, go ahead and just collapse the data classes that we have, there's literally one function that this entire page list epoxy controller overrides at the moment. This is the minimum function that we need to implement in order to have everything compile and have everything work. However, there's another very powerful function that we can go ahead and override to accomplish exactly what we're trying to do here. So we can very easily override this function called add models. And if we quickly just command click in, we can see here saying this function adds all built models to the adapter. You can override this method to add extra items into the model list or remove some. So at this point here, we get passed in the models, which is just a list of epoxy models of any type here. As you can see, that is the return type here. We know that we are returning a very particular epoxy model implementation, so we can use that to our advantage. But we're basically given the list that the page list has at that moment in time of epoxy models, and we can do what we will with it. So we can use this to our advantage to come up with the different sections that we need to build in order to get 
the headers in the proper locations. So we first need to check for our base case here, right? We can just say, if the models is empty, this would be a pretty good time to uh, not only do nothing else, but also add a loading epoxy model. We actually have that uh, already from a previous episode, but it's just a little model here that has a loading spinner that just sits there on the screen. And so we'll simply add it to the controller and then return if our models are empty. And then otherwise we can go ahead and build this out. So like I said here, the first five, it's always the first five characters seem to be this main family. So we can go ahead and use this data class that we just created here, this epoxy model implementation, and add our main family header at the top of the screen. We do so like this, where we simply just pass in our title and we come up with a unique identifier and then we add it to our epoxy model, excuse me, our epoxy controller. And then we can call super.addModels. And what we're gonna wanna do here is sublist the models. So we're gonna wanna sublist from zero to five, which will take the first five index, uh, the first five indices of this list, meaning zero through four, really. Uh, but that will be this group of characters here. And then moving forward, we wanna do something with the remaining models uh, as far as grouping them by whatever the first letter in their name is, and then going ahead and injecting this little header view ahead of them, and then all of the models for that group. So fortunately, Kotlin has a very nice function here that we can make use of, but first we will get the sublist that we require. So it's going to be the sublist from five to models.size. We can cast this to a list of these models because we do know for a fact that the only model we are returning is this one. And then we can call a very nifty function here group by and we have to fill out this predicate here on each of these uh, epoxy models that we are going to then go ahead and group each model by. So we'll simply take the name variable and we will uh, take a look at the first character of the name and then we'll just say to uppercase to standardize everything in case the letters are not all uppercase. And then we can go ahead and call for each here on this map. Now the group by function returns a map whose key is whatever value you provide here as the predicate for the group by. And then the value is going to be a list of whatever items inside of the list we were grouping by are affected or satisfy this predicate here. So we're basically grouping all of the models by the first letter of the name field. And then we can very easily just copy this right here to add our little header to the front of this group. It's gonna rename this variable here to map entry. So then we can very easily say map entry dot key. Now this is a character. We can call to, uh, to uppercase on it with the locale being us and then to string on that and to switch that around real quick call to string and then to uppercase on the character now inherently this value should be unique because again we are grouping by them so we're just going to go ahead and very easily extract this information out and then use it in our uh, as far as what our title equals and then for our ID again because all of this should be unique and then we can call super dot add models on our map entry dot value which again is a list of well you can't see it there but it is a list of our grid item epoxy model which is exactly what we we're looking for and that's basically it so I'm actually just gonna comment this out really quickly and rerun things here just so we get the app back to the original state that it was in. There's no loading state here. And then I need to call super.addModels here because otherwise it's just gonna sit there forever. So again, no loading state and then all of our elements come in here. You can see that it's just the two by n grid here that exists and everything is in the correct order, but there is no separation here. So if we go ahead and just cut this out and then uncomment this, our little implementation and update it and rerun the application here, we should see exactly how we started this episode with. There was a little bit of a uh, loading screen if you saw there and immediately there is an issue with our span count, which I forgot to do because we were in a grid layout. So we can very easily on any epoxy model override 
the uh, get span size, and in this case, we want to return the total span count, which is two. So this particular element will take up two, which is the entire span, so therefore it will take up the entire width of this screen. Epoxy models just default to one, so I apologize for missing that. But we can see our main family header, we can see the five main family members here, and then we see A, and going back into our list here of alphabetical characters. And flick through it a little bit and just see Huh. Well, that's interesting. It seems like the data that we've gotten back here is not completely alphabetical. All right, so it does seem that there is a little bit of a break here in the data as far as uh, not everything being alphabetical, but for the majority of things, you can see here M and then N, O, P, and, and, and so on and so forth. So I'm just going to chalk that up with the fact that there's nothing that we can really do, especially on client side, because this is a page list. There's nothing we can do to kind of update that and make sure, because without fetching everything, all of the characters all at once, sorting them alphabetically, and then grouping them by their first letters, we won't actually be able to guarantee 100% perfection here. However, this episode was not necessarily to have the implementation be perfect, but more so uh, discuss this add models function here and the functionality of it. And for a free API, I'll take it, it works just fine. Um, so there you have it. We've just very simply added in the different header cells here to the list to separate some of our data uh, alphabetically here. So if you made it this far in the video, I'd really appreciate a like. Please do subscribe if you notice you are not so that you don't miss out on any of the other content coming out. And thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.